Well, tonight let's turn back once again to Romans chapter number 1. Romans chapter number 1. We're looking at the gospel is our confidence. As the Apostle Paul wrote this letter, he had never visited Rome, and the Roman church was thinking, well, Maybe uh, Paul's ashamed of the gospel. Of course, he wasn't ashamed of the gospel. And he's making here in the early part of these verses, making that uh, known and uh, establishing the, the fact that his confidence is in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, I want us to read, we're going we're gonna to be dealing with verses 5 and 6, but let's read the, the earlier verses also. To begin reading verse number 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead, by whom, speaking of Jesus, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ. And thus far we have taken a look at Paul's confidence was proved by the position of uh, his position in the gospel, and that is that he was a servant of Jesus Christ. We saw that Paul's confidence was consistent with God's promise of the gospel, that uh, just Jesus, the one that came and died on the cross of Calvary and uh, rose the third day, was the one that was promised in the Old Testament Scriptures. And then Paul's confidence was based on the person of the gospel, and that gospel, the gospel is based on the person, the person of Jesus Christ, there in verse number 3. And then we saw last week Paul's confidence was grounded in the evidence of the gospel, and that evidence is found in the resurrection of Jesus. Now tonight, we want to begin looking at Paul's confidence was made real by the performance of the gospel. What did the gospel do? When we're talking about performance of the gospel what, we're talking about what the gospel did in his life and does in others' lives, including our life. Amen? The God, what the gospel did for Paul, it did for those that are, were believers in Rome, and it does the same thing in our lives. When we, The moment we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, we were saved. And let me just state this, uh, by the way. The gospel and the gospel alone brings about anything that is praiseworthy in our lives. Paul did not get the way that he was on his own. Uh, man, you talk about a, a 180. <laughs> you know, he did a 180. He was, he was going as far as you could uh, against Jesus Christ and going as hard as he could against Jesus Christ and going uh, hard against those that uh, were preaching the gospel and that uh, held to the gospel he wanted to see to it that they were either locked up or put to death or locked up and then put to death. You know, he, uh, he, he, he beat no bones about that. But we see the first performance of the gospel is the gospel is the basis of our conversion. There in verse number 5 he says, By whom we have received grace. Now, the gospel was the basis of Paul's conversion. And let's first look at, um, of course he was Saul then, let's look, let's look at Paul's conversion recorded in Acts chapter 9. We're going to be in the book of Acts quite a bit tonight, and we'll be turning to a couple of other passages of Scripture, so you, you, you want to uh, kind of hold your place there in Romans, so we'll, uh, I'll may refer back uh, there uh, later on, but uh, look at uh, Acts chapter 9. And we see here the, uh, where, G, where the, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ turned uh, Saul into the Apostle Paul. Turned him, first of all, from Saul, the, the, uh, he, was a, he was a worker of iniquity. He was a child of the devil. Now, he thought he was a child of God. He would, he would have argued with you. I mean, after all, he was a Pharisee. 
He was religious. He uh, tried his best to follow the law, but he he woefully failed. And he freely admits that later on in the book, in Romans chapter number 3, we all failed miserably when it came to the law of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, here in, in Acts chapter number 9, verse number 1, we see uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Saul come to his conversion, and we see the gospel was the basis of Paul's conversion. Um, look at that, verse number 1. Acts 9, verse 1, And Saul, and that was his name before he was Paul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter, notice this, against the disciples of the Lord. In other words, those who were followers of Christ, those who were preaching the gospel, uh, had been directed to preach the gospel, and they were uh, doing as they were told. Uh, those are the ones that he was breathing out threatenings and slaughter against. It says he went into the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, any of what way? The way of Jesus. Those that believed the gospel. Those that believed in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If, they found, if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to earth and heard a voice say unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Now, if, if he hadn't have seen the Lord, which I, I believe that he saw the Lord very briefly before he was blinded or as he was blinded, uh, he'd wonder, which, which of all the people that I persecuted did, uh, is trying to do this to me, right? Because he persecuted a lot of people. But those persecutions were not persecutions only of those people. They were persecutions of Christ, and that's what Christ points out here. And he says here, he makes it very clear that he uh, knows us the Lord. And he said, Who art thou? Well, Lord, well look at verse 4. Excuse me, verse 4. He fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, uh, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will I have me to do? And, he, and the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Now, uh, Saul was miraculously transformed right then and there. He became uh, a child of God. And we know that Ananias, he was told to go meet um, you know, he's here, he's blinded, and he's having to be led around. And uh, Ananias, on his end, has been told to go and meet Saul. And he's kind of hesitant, not wanting to do that, because he's heard about this fellow. He knows what he does to believers. Uh, but uh, he, the Lord sent him anyway. And when he gets to, to Saul, notice verse number 17. Uh, well, well, let's back up to verse number 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So here uh, we see that the, the additional things that the Lord told him. And then uh, as he meets Ananias, it says in verse 17, And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, he was a brother. Right. Man, he was he was saved by that point. Yeah, brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, we see here the basis of his conversion was not him doing a 180. The basis of him doing a 180 was his conversion. <laughs> You know, some people put the cart before the horse, and and uh, you know, you, you had, he they, he repented and believed the gospel, and what showed he repented was man, he, the the turnaround that we see in his life. 
Scripture makes it clear here that uh, Saul was confronted by the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ and this encounter brought grace by faith in Christ. He said, uh, he, remember what he said over in, uh, in our text there? He says, by whom we have received grace. He's including himself there. He said, I received grace from uh, the Lord and you received grace from the same Lord. You know, the one that uh, was... Uh, uh, was crucified and one that was buried and one that rose again on the third day. That's the one. And remember uh, that uh, there's another declaration. This is not the only declaration uh, uh, made by Paul of his conversion. Turn to uh, Acts chapter number 22. Acts chapter number 22. There are actually three and I, I want to look at um, uh, these for a, uh, a purpose, a couple of verses that we want to see. A lot of things are the same, and I'm not going to read this whole thing out of Acts 22. You can read the whole story there, verses 1 through 21, but I want us to pay attention to verses 14 and 15. And of course, there in verse 13, um, you know, and this is the part where he came and said, Brother Saul, have received thy sight. And at the same hour I looked. Uh, up upon him. And it says in verse 14, and he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee that thou shouldest know his will and see that just one and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth for thou shalt be a, his witness unto all men, notice, of what thou hast seen and heard. What had he seen and heard? The resurrected Lord. Yeah, he, he had a personal confrontation with the resurrected Lord. That kind of had an influence on you, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he he had he had that uh, confrontation there with him on the Damascus Road, and it did make a great difference in his life. Look at uh, Acts chapter twenty-six. A few few uh, uh, pages over there. Acts twenty-six. I'm not going to read this whole one either. It's Acts 26, uh, Paul is before King Agrippa. I didn't mention the, the other. Uh, Paul was before a hostile crowd, <laughs> a crowd that was uh, wanting to do him in, and he got pulled apart. By, uh, he was saved by some Roman soldiers, and uh, he, he asked for the permission to speak to the crowd, and he was given permission to speak to the crowd, and he took the opportunity to preach Jesus to them. And uh, he, he told his testimony, how he came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And here, he's before uh, King Agrippa. And, uh, of course, King Agrippa is a Gentile. And King Agrippa uh, doesn't know the Lord. He needs to know, know the Lord. And so what does Paul do? Paul shares the gospel. He shares what happened to him. You know, our testimony is a powerful thing. When you just take and tell folks what happened to you, tell folks where you were, and, you know, when Jesus found you, and how that... Uh, you came to an understanding of, uh, of your lost condition and how you came to an understanding that uh, Jesus uh, Christ is the only way of salvation. And uh, you share that conversion experience. That's a powerful thing. And that's something that really anybody can do. You don't even have to have a good uh, handle on the Scriptures to, to tell folks, look, let me tell you what Jesus did for me. Uh, if Jesus has done something for you, you ought to be able to tell folks what he did for you. Uh, here we find a third declaration, though, given by Paul uh, before King Agrippa. And it's the whole the thing uh, is found in verses 1 through 23 here. But I want us to look at uh, verses 16 through 18. And here he, uh, he, he gives us a little more detail about what the Lord told him. Uh, we know that this is the Lord speaking and because of verse 15. I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. And we read that in Acts 9. But he told him here in verse 16, But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of the things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, 
to open their eyes. And that what the Lord does to us when we when we He, he did for us when we came to, to know Him, He opened our eyes. To open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light. Aren't you glad you've been changed from the darkness unto the light? And from the power of Satan unto God. You know, think about back, back the, uh, during that time when you, you were under Satan's domain. And how you've been changed. And now you, now you belong to the Lord. He said that, that they may receive forgiveness of sins. And inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith. That is in me there it is the faith is in the lord jesus christ the risen lord and uh, he goes on to tell agrippa that he wasn't disobedient to that vision that he went and he did exactly what the lord told him to do look at verse number 20 but showed first unto them of damascus <laughs> he started right where he got saved at amen Right there on the Damascus Road, he's headed there to, to, to go lock folks up. And he went, wound up going there preaching the gospel. Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. So, you know, when you turn, that's the first thing. You turn to God. And then those works come that show you that you repented and we, we know that that was the case with Paul's life. And so we see three times there Paul's conversion is detailed in the book of Acts. Now, Paul was very clear about who he uh, thought he was persecuting. I mean, he thought he was persecuting the disciples of the Lord, the ones that we saw in Acts 9.1. Remember, we saw that phrase, the disciples of the Lord. And any of this way, the way, the way, way of uh, the gospel, verse, verse two, Acts nine, verse two. Well, what were the disciples told by the resurrected Jesus that they were to preach? Look back at Luke chapter number, um, Luke chapter number twenty-four. Luke twenty-four for just a minute. Luke twenty-four. They got this from uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Where did Paul get his from? The Lord Jesus Christ. And the disciples got there saint from the Lord Jesus Christ. And we see there in Luke 24, verse number 44, Jesus is with them there, and He said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament scriptures. He fulfilled. Uh, uh, I got a, a uh, on the door there of the sound room. Uh, there's a hundred uh, prophecies there. Hundred prophecies that were fulfilled by the Lord Jesus Christ in His first coming. Um, but here we see that he talks about the things that were there. They says, Then he opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. What did they understand? The Old Testament Scriptures. They began to see Jesus in the Old Testament Scriptures. They saw very clearly that the Old Testament Scriptures pointed to Jesus Christ uh, coming to this earth and that He was the Messiah and that He was going to give His life a ransom for sin and how that he was going to be buried and how that he was going to arise, uh, arise again from the grave. Now, verse 46, notice this. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. That just like it was prophesied, the prophet said this is what's going to happen. That's what happened. Notice verse 47 and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. What were they witnesses of? Well, they were witnesses, uh, uh, number one, that they had seen the resurrected Christ. They were witnesses also uh, that the, the things that their, was, their understanding was open to in the Scriptures of how those things related to the Lord Jesus Christ, they were witnesses of that. And they were witnesses of these things, and they, as they went about, they were the ones that Paul thought he was after, that he was persecuting, 
and uh, the, the, that's what they were told to preach. Well, what did they actually preach? Well, let's take a look at Acts chapter number 2. Acts chapter number 2. And of course, this is when, on the day of Pentecost. Acts 2 and uh, verse number 21. We see uh, Peter preaching his sermon to the people on the day of Pentecost here. In Acts 2.21 it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the, name, on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Notice, notice what he's testifying of here. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. We've been seeing that on Sunday morning, haven't we? and our study through the Gospel of John as we've been preaching through the Gospel of John. Jesus did many things that proved that He was who He said He was. He said He was approved of God among you by those miracles and wonders and signs which God did by Him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know. They couldn't deny that. They couldn't deny that uh, Jesus healed blinded eyes or that He healed uh, 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 limbs or that he healed, that he fed five thousand plus, but you know, with a, just a, a, a little boy's lunch. All of these miracles, all the, and all of the miracles that Jesus did, that they were known, and uh, he, uh, God did that through Jesus. And He says, uh, verse number two, look at verse number two. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, saying that. You know, this was ordained that it was going to happen. But he didn't let them off the hook there. He says, Ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. They had blood of Jesus on their hands, but Jesus gave up his life. You know? Jesus, Jesus was the one who willingly gave himself to be the ransom for sin. Notice verse 24, Whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was is was not possible that he should be holding of it. So it's very clear here of what's being preached. Look at verse 32. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Very clearly uh, indicating that they uh, were witnesses of the uh, of the risen Christ. We know that Jesus showed himself alive for a, a period of 40 days and. Uh, they were witnesses of that. They saw it, and many others besides them saw that uh, more than more than just Peter and the and the eleven that were there. They, uh, there were others that saw the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Acts chapter number three, Acts three, verse number thirteen. Acts three thirteen. It says here, this is Peter uh, um, speaking here. It says that the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob and the, the God of our fathers hath glorified His Son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied Him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let Him go, but ye denied the Holy One. In other words, they said, you know, He is not the Messiah. You know, He is not from God. That's what they were doing. You know, we want him dead. He's claiming that he's from God, but we want him dead. You denied the Holy One and just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, and here he says again, whereof we are witnesses. Skip down to verse 18. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets, what things? that Christ should suffer, He had so fulfilled. All those things in the Old Testament that pointed to the, the sufferings of Christ on, the, on our behalf, Christ fulfilled that and He called them to repent there in verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Look at Acts chapter number 4, verse number 1 and 2. And it says here, and as they, um, as they spake unto the people, uh, the priests and the captains of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Of course, we know the Sadducees didn't believe 
and the resurrection from the dead. But uh, there the latter part, I've got to read verse uh, 26 there of the previous chapter, chapter 3, verse 26. Unto you first God, having raised up His Son, uh, Jesus, sent Him to bless you in turning away every one of you from His iniquities. In other words, the Gospel's to you. Will you believe it? Now, the Gospel's to you. Uh, you can have it. It's yours. Uh, Christ died for you. And uh, they didn't like, the Sadducees didn't like preaching the, of the resurrection from the, from the dead. Look down in verse number, verse number 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, here he is before the council here. Peter and John are before the council. Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him that this man stand here before you whole. Look down to verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now, did they preach that Jesus was a way of salvation? No. So this is it. This is God's way. God said this is what we're going to sin. He sent His Son, Jesus Christ. He died for sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day. You've got to believe on Him. You've got to repent and believe the Gospel. If you don't repent and believe the Gospel, there's no hope for you. And that's still true today, isn't it? Still true. Look at Acts chapter number 5. Acts 5 in verse number, um, verse number 17. Acts 5 verse 17. It says, Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles, and put them in the common prison, but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, notice this, go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. What life? Eternal life. The, the resurrection life in Christ. And how you get the resurrection life in Christ. That's what they were to be telling about. Look at verse 25. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. What were they doing? They were being obedient to what they were told when they were let go out of, out of the prison. Um, look on down, the verse, verse uh, 26. And then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? They were very clearly teaching in the name of Jesus. He says, And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. So what they were doing is they were, they were preaching the gospel. They say, with your doctrine, it wasn't their doctrine, it was the doctrine that the Lord Jesus Christ gave to them to preach. And that's why Peter said, and, uh, and the other apostles answered and said, we, we, we ought to obey God rather than men. And the, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And notice again, and we are His witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey Him. And so uh, they were very clearly preaching uh, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse number 41 and 42. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for His name, and daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Now all of this happened before Saul was converted. These were the people that Saul was after. Those that were testifying of the resurrected Lord. Those that were being obedient to the angel. Being obedient to 
the Lord Jesus Christ also, being obedient to preach the gospel of the Lord. So these were the ones that Saul, Paul, and what you want to call him, was, was after those preaching the gospel of Christ. Now, Christ was clear about who Paul was persecuting, wasn't he? Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Now, look back at Romans chapter 1 again. Understand that when Paul used the terms here, and he, and he uses different terms, but he means the same thing, okay? Uh, verse number 1, he calls it the gospel of God. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated into the gospel of God. It is the gospel of God. Okay? Jesus is God. It's the gospel of Jesus. The gospel of God. It's the gospel of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. I mean, they that this this was uh, this was agreed upon that Christ would do this before the foundation of the world. Right. <laughs> now we see also. Look at uh, verse number sixteen. They here he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Okay, it calls it the gospel of God in verse 1, gospel of Christ here. Well, it is the gospel of Christ because it's his death, burial, and resurrection in it. And then verse 15, look at verse 15, he says, So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. He just called, plainly called it the gospel. And you know why? Because it's the only gospel. Gospel means good news. Right. And apart from the death, burial, the resurrection, if whatever else anybody wants to preach, they want to add something to it or take something away from it, they're not preaching the gospel. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. Paul makes it very clear here. 1 Corinthians 15. And I know it's familiar territory to you. But it, we, we're, lay, we're laying the foundation here of, of, of what, we're, what we're talking about. That this was the confidence that Paul had. The gospel is the basis of our conversion. It was the basis of Paul's conversion, the basis of our conversion too. Notice uh, what, what he says here in, in verse number 1. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. It means there's one. The gospel, the good news, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Uh, where, what gospel saved the Corinthian Christians? The same one that saved the Apostle Paul? The same one that saved the, the believers there in Rome? The same gospel, that was a different gospel. They were preaching the same thing. He says, verse 2, By which also ye are saved, ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, notice, I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. He's preaching exactly what he received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the scripture. So Paul specifically declares what the gospel that he received is right here. If there be any doubt about what he says that the gospel is. Now, Paul also specifically declares that there is no other gospel. You know where we're going now, don't you? Galatians chapter number one. Galatians chapter number one. Very clear in Galatians one that, that, that Paul declares that there is no other gospel. Gospel. Galatians 1 and verse number 1. It says here, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, and then we're going to get into the apostleship, Lord willing, next week. Our calling, Paul's calling didn't come from man. It wasn't of men, didn't come by man, but by Jesus Christ. You know, our calling comes the same way. You know, it's the same way. Uh, we're, not, we're not apostles in the, in the office of an apostle like the Apostle Paul was, but we are sent ones. That's what the apostle means, right? We're sent ones. And uh, I don't go around calling myself an apostle, but I am sent to, to, to bear the gospel. Um, he says, uh, by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. 
and all the brethren which are uh, with me unto the churches of Galatia. Grace be to you, peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And then he says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you unto the grace of Christ unto another gospel. What was happening is they were allowing the Judaizers to add to the gospel of Christ uh, law-keeping. And saying that, you know, you really can't be saved unless you keep the law too. Well, that's not the gospel. The gospel is we got salvation and the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ by grace through faith in Him and Him alone uh, through the gospel alone. And notice what he says here, uh, to the, uh, call you into the grace of Christ, uh, unto another gospel, which is not another. It's very clear that this another gospel is not another gospel. So because it's not good news. It's not, you know, if you give somebody something that don't work, it's not good news, is it? It's not good news. So, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And we say before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. What, what they were attempting to do, these Judaizers, was to reconcile uh, uh, the, this with Judaism. And they weren't to do that. <laughs> the, the gospel brings together the Jew, Gentile alike in one body. Now, notice verse 11. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man. Where did he receive it? Damascus Road, remember? He receives, I never neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus revealed himself to the Apostle Paul there on the Damascus Road. That's where he received the gospel. That's the gospel that he preached. That's the gospel that he lays out in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. That's the gospel that he's saying, uh, look, you need to get back to old school. <laughs> get, get back to the old gospel, the, the, the true gospel. Because anything added to it is not, uh, it takes away from it being the gospel. Uh, look at verse 12. Uh, again, I, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's important. I mean, he, he received it from the source, didn't he? So the gospel was the basis of Paul's conversion. And then uh, second thing, we're gonna, and we're going to uh, draw this to a close, the gospel is the basis of every conversion. Every conversion. And we go back to our, our passage there in Romans 1, uh, in verse number 5 and 6 again. It says, By whom we have received grace. Okay? If you've received grace, you received the same way the Apostle Paul did. We have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for His name. Notice, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ. Um, they that have received the gospel, they that have believed the gospel, it was the, 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 the gospel was the basis of their conversion. The Apostle Paul was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew it was the power. And we, he'll get into that later, but on this, the Bible is very clear. Salvation is through believing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. John the Baptist declared it to his disciples. In John 3.36, he says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Well, what did Jesus say about himself? Say, you know, you, you kill me, and three days later I'm going to come up. Well, that includes believing the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ on it. It does. If you don't believe Jesus, um, 
Peter, in his preaching before the council, said, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Peter, in his preaching to Cornelius, and those that were with Cornelius, in Acts 10, verse 43, says, To him, speaking of Jesus, to him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sin. So, where's our confidence? It's in the gospel. You know, Satan wants us to lose confidence, doesn't he? He wants to think, well, you know, did what I do with Christ, is that, is that really enough? Yeah, it's enough. It is enough. In fact, you add something to it, you're going beyond what the Lord said. Amen? Don't do that. Uh, what we need to do is have our confidence in the gospel of Christ because it's the gospel, only the gospel, is that which saves us. Amen? And uh, what a blessing. Paul's confidence was made real by the performance of the gospel in his own personal life, and what it did in his life, and, what it, and he was saying... What it did for me, it could do for you. Now, we don't all receive the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ by being struck blind on a road somewhere and Jesus appearing to us personally. That's not the way it happens. It happened to Apostle Paul that way. But it doesn't happen that way. All we need to do is have the gospel preached to us and we believe the gospel. Amen? And if you did that, you did the part that brings about salvation. It's not that other stuff. That other stuff's peripheral. We could, we could take uh, salvation testimonies in here about how you came to know the Lord. And I doubt any any uh, two routes were the same. Some of you got saved in church. Some of you got saved at your house. Some of you got saved in, in the bed. Some of you got saved when you walked down the aisle. You know, we, we could talk about the different different things and what, what caused you to come to your realization of your knowledge that you needed to be saved. Well, that's your personal testimony. Paul's personal testimony was, hey, I was going to do Christian sin. At least I thought I was doing Christian sin. But who I was really persecuting was Jesus. And Jesus got a hold of my life, and He didn't let me go. <laughs> he turned, turned me around, and He's still with me. And He wants to turn you around and be, still be with you. Let's, let's get the gospel of, the, uh, of, of Jesus Christ to others in these last days so that they can come to a saving knowledge of Jesus. Those of us that are here tonight, we know the Lord. We claim to know the Lord as our Savior. We, we testify to that. Praise God for that. Uh, but what this means for us, we, we need to show confidence in the gospel. And one of the ways we show confidence is by sharing it with folks that need it. Amen. You show confidence by sharing it. And so let's do that. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank